Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today we've got another mechanical keyboard review for you guys. As you can tell from the title, this is the Keychron K1 V4. As you know, we've reviewed the K1 V3 a while back and I will link that video right here. So as you know, we've used a lot of Keychron products. This one we did buy for ourselves. So all of you out there, don't even think about accusing us of having some kind of unfair biased opinion or whatever, because we paid good money for this and the shipping was a little outrageous. But anyways, let's just jump into the review itself. As a side note, I'm going to preface that I've never been a big fan of low profile mechanical keyboards. Let's just, you know, pack that all up and throw it out the window because this will be an unbiased review. So the K1 V4 is version four, as you know, but for those of you who've never used the K1, it is a low profile mechanical keyboard. As you can see, it's way different than the height of a regular mechanical keyboard. I'll get a regular one and you guys can compare the height. So this is the K6 and this is a pretty much a normal size mechanical keyboard. And next to it is the K1. So as you can see, the switches are different and the keycaps are different and the case is different. And all of these things make it a low profile mechanical keyboard. If you like using chiclet keys, if you like using laptop like keyboards, and or if you really think that a regular mechanical keyboard will hurt your wrist, then having a low profile keyboard may be the choice for you. But in the end, it is up to you to decide whether you like something or not and if it's your preference or not. So what's in the box? In the box, you get the keyboard itself, of course. You get the keycap puller. It always comes with a keycap puller. For this keyboard, you don't really need a keycap puller because there's good space and it's floating keycap. So you can just pluck those keycaps off with your fingers. As long as you're careful, you should be fine. It also comes with the charging wire. It's not too long. It's about four feet, I believe. And it's not braided. It's a rubber cable. It's pretty normal cable, nothing special about it. It is a USB-C cable. And then of course, like always with Keychron, you get the Mac and the Windows keycaps for compatibility with both operating systems. So whether you use Windows or whether you use Mac, you can get those keycaps and customize it for whatever you're using it for. For me, I use Windows. It comes by default with the Mac ones on it. So I always switch it out to the Windows ones because well, that's what I'm using it for. You also get the quick start guide, which has pretty much everything you need to know about it from a first glance, like how to connect the Bluetooth, how to change the keycaps, how to turn on like different lighting modes and put it into sleep and things like that. And then you have the in-depth manual. So if you need any other information about the keyboard, that should be in there as well. And both these things I believe are available on the Keychron website if you end up losing any of those things. Let's go over some of the options that they have available on their website. We did order the 10 keyless one with white backlight only with the Gateron low profile brown switches. They have it in either 10 keyless or full size if you need that number pad. And then the color options are either white backlight or RGB backlight. They both come with an, a full aluminum frame, which is really nice. And later on, we'll go about whether it's sturdy or not. And then the switch options are Gateron low profile, red, blue, and brown. The K1 V3 only had red and blue. So that brown option is new and it's probably what I was missing in version three because I like tactile switches. And then this one has Bluetooth 5.1 instead of Bluetooth 3.0. It feels like an upgrade. I honestly don't really use Bluetooth too often to say whether it is or not. I did attempt to connect it to my laptop, but my MacBook wanted me to in input a password or something. and. But anyways, with the full aluminum body, it's super sturdy. I did accidentally drop it and it does have a little scuff on the very top right there. 
um, but you know it happens so it didn't break and then i also tried bending it pretty sturdy nothing moved even against like a table or your knee it's very sturdy and almost impossible to bend so very nice sturdy build there if you look at the back which is where we always start first you'll notice that there are four rubber bump-ons but no adjustable kickstands or feet of any kind so that means you're stuck at the angle that it's in and i believe the angle it's in is around two to three degrees of incline it is a very small incline but if you really want it to be more inclined, you can always put something on the backside and raise it up. Honestly, it's not too big of a deal to me, but I have seen other people complain that with a keycap angle the way it is and the keyboard angle being not very high, that it does produce a negative tilt. That means when you have it on your desk, the keycaps tilt in a way where it's higher on your end and lower on the other end. But the back is very clean, just those four rubber bump-ons. And then we'll look at the side. The side has its full aluminum frame right there. And pretty much the entire keyboard is aluminum. It's super sturdy. And I believe it weighs 22 ounces or 640 grams about there. So a little bit over a pound and a half. So from the side, you can see that it has about three degrees of incline. Usually with mechanical keyboards, I've seen ranging, I've seen it range from six to nine degrees with seven to eight being somewhere like my ideal angle, but it's all just preference really. You can also see that it has a floating keycap design. Now this may not be for everybody. It does make the light I guess if you have the RGB version, the lights would shine very nicely. With the whites, when with the low profile design and the keycaps there, it's almost blinding with that white light where the LED is coming out from. So that could either be a really good thing or a really not so good thing, depending on what you want. And then with floating keycaps, it's really easy for hair or dust or cat fur, dog fur, whatever, to really get into those crevices. With the spacing between the keycaps and then the spacing underneath, it's really easy to start accumulating dust quickly. And then you can see from the side as well that the keycaps are not flat but they're curved and that's one of the new updates of the version 4 alongside that the keycaps are also two-toned with a light gray and a dark gray color instead of just being all black and i believe that matches the keychron aesthetic really nicely of course they come with the orange escape key and the orange light key here but i like everything to be pretty much monochromatic so that's why i put that like that and then another thing with these keycaps is that they don't really accumulate finger oils too quickly i've been typing on this a lot because of us dog sitting and having to be downstairs a lot more often and it pretty much has zero fingerprints right now and i've been typing it on it pretty consistently for about a week now and I've been realizing that the keycaps are pretty high quality. I really, really, really love the new Legends and what they did to it. It's super clean and my favorite part of it is probably page up and page down. It just looks super clean. The shine through is really nice. Everything is visible. There's no inconsistency and it's overall great build as far as the keycaps go one problem i have with the keycaps is that low profile keycaps are really hard to find when it comes to custom sets let's talk about the stabilizers so the stabilizers are sort of similar to costar stabilizers where they have a wire that sits above the plate and then snaps into the keycaps you probably won't be finding replacement stabilizers very easily so be sure not to do any bad things to your keyboard. When I dropped my keyboard, the shift did fall off of the keyboard pretty easily, um, but it was super easy to put the stabilizers back in. You just connect them. And then they do produce a little bit of rattle, 
but overall when you're typing naturally it's not too bad if you're just pressing that space bar over and over and over again you'll be able to hear that rattle pretty clearly but just typing and normal gaming should be fine and then the switches the gather low profile switches i got the browns which is the heaviest actuation force at 55 grams the blues are 50 grams and the red is 45 grams which is the lightest so these are heavy and when i type on them it's fine however certain positions where i put my finger on the keycap at a location that's not the center i do get some sticking i would say especially with the letter c when i type that i get stuck a lot and then i've been using the backslash as a backspace so that's been sticking a lot too i guess it really depends on the way you type and how you move your fingers around the keyboard when you're typing so that's my only complaint there with those switches i do like the browns the tactile bump is at the top so you feel the bump first and then you can bottom out if you please or if that's just how you do and then bluetooth is very easy to connect like other keychron keyboards there are two switches on the back and this is on the back not on the side like other keychron keyboards on the back you see that there is a cable off and bluetooth switch so if you want to connect to bluetooth slide it over and then the other switch is about compatibility whether it's mac or windows so select that if you wish and then in the Sort of in the middle here, more pushed towards the right, is a USB-C charging cable. So it's pretty cool that it's in the back instead of in the side. I like that a lot actually. And then the battery is half as big as they are in the other keyboards. The other Keychron keyboards have a 4000 milliampere hour battery which lasts about 70 hours depending on your usage. This one is 2000 milliampere hours which lasts about 35 hours. They advertise 36 to 38 hours. I honestly haven't really had the battery die on me over these past few days because I charge it overnight. And yeah, with the other ones, if they die, it takes quite a while to get it back to a charge where you can use it. So I really try not to let it die at all. And I recommend you do the same. To connect to devices, you just press FN and the either one, two, or three, it should be really easy to connect. And it has an indicator at the top there, whether it needs to charge or not, or whether it's charging or not. There's also a caps lock indicator that glows blue when you press on caps lock and when that's on. And the height, I guess, I've heard some people complain about the height of this keyboard, but honestly it is pretty low profile already there's not much to complain about it is 18 millimeters at its highest compared to other mechanical keyboards that could be four centimeters like 40 millimeters at their highest so that's a huge difference that's it's more than 50 percent less of the height of some of these other mechanical keyboards and then the rgb has 15 plus styles and effects for this keyboard we got it in the white backlight and we can show you and cycle through the white backlight effects on this keyboard right now but for rgb um, we did get the k2 k4 k6 and k8 with rgb so if you're interested in those lighting effects just watch any of those keyboard reviews and it should be time stamped in the description box for the rgb effects if you really want to know
So I believe we've talked about everything when it comes to this mechanical keyboard. It's very sturdy and between the V3 and the V4, I like this a whole lot more. The curved keycaps are nice. I can actually feel where my fingers are and what keys I'm typing rather than just blindly feeling around for the same height and the same textured keys. And the build just feels super sturdy. I really like that a lot. The only problem I really have with it is the stabilizers and the limited amount of keycaps that I can change this out with. And then another thing, this will not be my daily driver even though it's a pretty good keyboard because I personally don't like low profile mechanical keyboards. I will be sticking with my regular mechanical keyboard that I can just experiment with a ton of switches and stuff like that. So low profile is becoming more popular slowly, but compared to regular mechanical switches, they're still pretty limited. Anyways, in my opinion, if you like low profile and you want the Bluetooth and you want the backlight and the full size TKL or whatever, it's a really good low profile mechanical keyboard. For a very in-depth written out review that we wrote, uh, I'll link down below in the description box to our blog post with a bunch of pictures and details that I probably covered here. But if you wanna look that up instead of watching the whole video again, go ahead and see that blog post. As always, links to the products will be down in the description box. And if you haven't already, please follow our Instagram profile where I go over different things that we've posted in the past that you may have missed but i also go over new discoveries and group buys that i'm interested in or new keyboards that i'm interested in new switches whatever and for more insights on our life and what keyboards we're currently using and reviewing you can check that out there in the description below as well and for more keychron keyboard stuff i'll link you to a playlist right here and for our k1 v3 review you can see that right here and subscribe here if you want to you really should i'll see you in the next one